Over the weekend, Iran launched its first ever direct attack on Israel with a salvo of hundreds of drones and missiles. David Blumberg is currently in Israel, where his venture capital firm, Blumberg Capital, has offices and investments. David joins us now for more on the state of the Israeli economy and tech community. David, it is great to see you and have you on the show. Thank you so much, Josh. Great to see you as, as always. So, David, you're, you're in Israel now. You were obviously there over the weekend uh, during this Iranian attack. So, David, I, I just first want to know how you're doing. You can see I'm fine. I'm, I'm happy. I feel safe. I feel um, with my team here uh, on the ground. We had a, a meeting with about 20 of our portfolio companies last night. Um, we did it by Zoom instead of in, in meeting. But um, people are very resilient here. The, the streets, you can't see them. They're, they're full of people, at, you know, at restaurants. The clubs are, the clubs are busy. Um, traffic jams happening. Um, it, it's remarkable how normal it is in a time when, when I think in America or other places, if this happened, people would be really freaking out. Israelis are unfortunately somewhat used to these kinds of things. This is the most severe it's ever been. But they really did a great job with the Americans, the British, and the Jordanians and French to knock down 99.9% of all the projectiles. So I think people feel like they, they won this battle. And so, David, you know, the Israeli people, a resilient community. At the same time, you know, David, um, they are engaged in this three-front war. It's Iran, it's Hamas to the south, it's Hezbollah to the north. It's an enormous economic burden for the country, David. You just think of soldiers being called up and the tens of thousands of Israelis displaced in the north because of Hezbollah. How does the economy sustain this, David? Well, I like to always look for history, Josh. So as we recall, over the last 25 years, there have been four or five war conflict situations, plus COVID, plus the dot-com crash, plus you know, a number of other uh, financial crises, et cetera. So if we look at that, we see that over those 25 years, the Israeli uh, GDP per capita measure of productivity of every individual working grew two to 3% faster than OECD countries during that same period, pretty consistently. Now there were downturns and then they've come back. But over time, you see this growth. And in fact, uh, I was looking at the data recently. In 2023, Israel achieved a GDP per capita of $54,000. Now that is higher than France, higher than the UK, and higher than Japan, which surprised me to see that growth. Because Israel, when I first started coming here, was a much poorer country. But the tech boom in particular has really bolstered the economy. And as you're asking, it, it seems to thrive despite and through uh, downturns. There are downturns here, but the next year they get stronger. Are you confident, David, you know, when this war ends, whenever that may be, that the Israeli tech community emerges as strongly as ever, that it remains a true global tech powerhouse? Absolutely. Israel currently is the number one uh, recipient of number one for startups per capita. Their society is very startup oriented. I met dozens of young entrepreneurs who right now in the middle of this situation are pitching me plans uh, and wanting to grow. It's also number two in terms of investment in R&D uh, as a percentage of, of the GDP. It's number four in companies listed on NASDAQ. This is all developed over the last you know, 25, 30 years. It's not stopping. Why? Because Israel has, in my opinion, the requisite skills for the 21st century, high technical talent, training with this military experience that gives them uh, solidarity with their teammates, trust to uh, take on a new adventure, and, and experience training for software development in very important fields such as artificial intelligence. You know, your firm, David, Blumberg Capital, uh, you know, it has offices in Israel. What is what happens to a VC firm, David, during a hot war like this? I mean, are your colleagues there? Are they able to, you know, meet founders, write checks? Is anybody in doing deals, David, or is that kind of put on hold for now? We were meeting uh, companies here all, all the past two weeks. Um, we spoke at a university, had 25 students asking us Q&A questions about their future careers. Um, we saw it now, not in the venture world, but Intel uh, just a few months ago announced a $25 billion investment in a new fab. Uh, and they're learning from the past, too, because in history, when the Gulf War started, 
uh, Intel uh, kept their people producing 24-7 uh, throughout that war. And I think they've never, they're proud that they've never missed a day uh, of production or maybe one out of you know, 25 years. So th they've developed a way of coping with what might seem in a normal civilian life as a very difficult situation. But humans are very adaptable. And if they have to succeed because their lives depend on it their, and their livelihoods depend on it, they find a way forward. So I think Israel will come through this like they've come through five or six previous crises, stronger than before, battle tested. Their customers will say, wow, they innovated on the battlefield if they're buying defense equipment. They will say, wow, they kept delivering to us like Intel, the chips or software producers. And also I would say that the reserve demands for the Israeli military is generally about 15% maximum of, at any time. So when our companies were had their people called up, there was a period of a, a month or two where they had maybe 10 to 15% of their staff on the, on the front lines or in, in uh, support roles. But most of them are back now. There'll be another reserve call, it looks like, after this Iranian attack. Um, but again, they get through it. Most of these companies are, by national, are multinational from birth. Engineering is in Israel, but all the sales, marketing, and, and, and finance functions are often abroad in the U.S., chiefly sometimes in Europe. And so those colleagues in the outer diaspora world uh, pitch in and support as well. David, it was great to see you, my friend. Stay safe, and we'll talk soon. Thank you very much, Josh. Good to see you.